All right, so now we're going to be talking about DNA replication. Uh, DNA replication is the process by which the uh, one DNA strand is uh, copied and you have then two identical DNA strands. There's a particular way that this occurs, um, so that's very important um, that this mechanism be carried out correctly because then that can cause mutations, which we will be talking about in a later video. The DNA or DNA replication follows what's called the semi-conservative model. Semi means half and conservative means save and save something. And so then you have it saving half of the old. And so you can see this picture here, whereas you have this blue strand that serves as the original strand, this blue strand is going to separate and each strand, each original strand of the blue is going to serve as a template for this new red strand to be made. And what do I mean by a template? Well, the red strand is going to form a complementary strand to this old strand. And so complementary meaning that every time there's a C, it's going to create a G. And every time there's a T, it's going to make an A and so forth. And so then you're going to have this strand here is going to look identical to this one. And this one down here is going to look identical to this one. So then these two strands are identical to one another, even though half of that strand is represents the the old strand and then and half of it represents the newly replicated strand and that's what we mean by the semi-conservative model directionality in the dna molecule is very important dna is red meaning that the enzymes are going to move from a three prime to a five prime um, direction if you remember when we talked about um the directionality of the DNA molecule. We talked about how these sugars have numbers and they're numbered one, two, three, four, five. And so you have the, you know, this is an example here. These sugars have a number and here's the three prime sugar. And over here is the five prime sugar. And this is going to be a three to five prime direction. And the this other strand is parallel to it, but goes in the opposite direction. Right. And so there's we call that anti parallel, whereas the two strands are parallel to one another, but they're going in opposite directions. And so that's going to have an effect on how the DNA molecule is replicated. Since the enzymes read from three to five, one of the strands, as the enzymes are going to go along, is going to be continuous. It's going to just kind of it's kind of like if you had a roll of paper towels and you rolled it out and you were writing at the same time that the paper towel was rolling out, you're writing in the same direction that the paper towel is going. All right. And so that would be really easy. Um, and so the new bases are going to be added from a five to three, because this here's the original strand or the template strand. And this new strand that's going to be made is being made in the opposite direction. Right. And if this DNA molecule is being, is being unzipped in the, this direction as well from right to left as far as this picture is concerned then the leading strand is going to be adding new bases also from right to left and that's what's called the leading strand because it is making that it's making the new strand in the same direction that the dna is being unzipped in well notice this you're going to have a problem because if the DNA is being unzipped right to left as far as this picture is concerned, but DNA has to be read from three to five, then this strand has is going to have to be read in segments. The paper towel roll, so to speak, is going to have to open a little bit and then it's going to write a section, open a little bit more, write another section. And so that's why this strand happens in a discontinuous fashion. As it opens up, a little bit more is going to be copied. It's going to open up again. A little bit more is going to be copied. And it's going to copy in these fragments, which are called Akasaki fragments. I'm assuming it's named after someone named Akasaki. And uh, this is called the lagging strand. It's, it's going a little bit slower than the leading strand. Now, I mean, a little bit slower. It's, this is still happening incredibly quickly. A DNA molecule has about 6 billion base pairs, so this has to happen fast. And so uh, it's going to be lagging behind a little bit, but not a whole lot. Now, there are some enzymes involved in this process. And so this picture, just to kind of give you an idea, um, what we're talking about here, anytime you see, you're gonna, you can see a thousand pictures of this. 
and um, this little area right here where the two the where the molecule is forked is oftentimes called the replication fork um, and so you may hear you may see reference to that in a question or something and it's just telling you this is the place where replication is actively occurring all right and so here you have the leading strand and the lagging strand or notice the leading strand is being replicated in the same direction that the molecule is being unzipped and the lagging strand is having to it's having to unzip a little bit and then go in the opposite direction because dna has to be read in that three five three prime to five prime direction. So there are a couple of enzymes that are going to be involved in this. First of all, here's this enzyme called topoisomerase or topoisomerase, and it's going to be relaxing the coil. It's uh, relaxing the DNA strand so it's not coiled up. It's all of those negative charges that allow that DNA strand to kind of coil up on itself are going to be relaxed, and it's going to be nice and flat. It's kind of like iron and clothes. And so the next thing that's going to happen is you have this other molecule, this uh, enzyme called helicase that's going to actually come and unzip these hydrogen bonds here. Hydrogen bonds are, what's, are what connect those two sides of the DNA molecule, and so they're going to be relatively easy to separate. Helicase is going to be the one that's going to do that. All right, it's going to unzip them, and so once it does that, you're going to have some other molecules that are going to come in and do that. Well, uh, the first thing that has to happen is an RNA primer has to be put down, and there's only going to be one of those put down on the leading strand, and several of those are going to be put down on the um, lagging strand. The RNA primer is added by a, a molecule called primase, and it basically says this is where you start, right? This is where replication is going to start. And so the RNA primer sticks it down on the leading strand, and then this next molecule comes along called DNA polymerase, and DNA polymerase is the molecule that is actually adding the new bases. If this little thing right here is a T, it's going to go out and find an A and add it. If this is a C, it's going to add a G and so forth. And so that's what DNA polymerase is doing. Now, let's go to the lagging strand. You have the same characters involved in the lagging strand, but this primase is going to have to happen over and over again because it's going to start a new little section. And so as a new fragment is made, primase is going to come down, polymerase is going to come down right after that, right a little bit, new section is going to be opened, primase is going to come down, set down a primer, polymerase is going to set down on top of that primer, right a little bit. And so then you have all of these kind of fragments, we called them Okasaki fragments a second ago, and all these fragments need to be connected together right? They need to be binded together by something. And that is what this molecule does here. DNA ligase is going to go back behind these uh, and con connect all of these fragments. That prefix LIG, uh, think of like a ligament, and a, a, but ligaments connect bones to bones. And so ligase is going to go and stitch together all those oxycyca fragments to have a complete segment of DNA.